Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-popped wheat and Quaker-popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Run, King! Run! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, Bring you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Going, going, gone. That's the way Quaker Pup Wheat or Rice disappears at breakfast time. These ready-to-serve cereals hit the spot from first to last delicious spoonful. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns is exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or rice, topped with fruit, like, say, uh, sliced bananas, add milk and sugar, and say, do you know what? There's no beating this eating. That's what. Ben Taylor was a kindly old prospector who lived in his cabin near his claim about two miles outside the little settlement of Dundee. Old Ben's grandson, Bobby, ten years old, lived with him. Bobby was an orphan and thought his grandfather was the finest and bravest man in all the Yukon Territory. Old Ben had built himself up in Bobby's estimation by the many heroic tales he told the boy. Though the people in Dundee laughed at old Ben's habit of stretching the truth, they regarded him as a harmless and liable old sourdough. One cold, bleak day, as he and Bobby journeyed the two miles to the settlement by dog sled, old Ben, as usual, was telling the boy of his various past adventures. Yep, like I was saying, Bobby, I've done my bit to bring law and order to this here Yukon Territory. (laughs) Yes, sir. Well, I recollect the time that I... You mean you belong to the Maudis, Grandpa? Well, no, I didn't say that, son, but I reckon they would have took me on if I... If I'd have told him I was willing, get up. Marsh! Now, where, where was I? Oh, yes, like I was saying, I recollect the time I was over in Selkirk when there was a ruckus in the Creighton Post there. Seems like a big, tough crook from Whitehorse had come to Selkirk and was holding up the Creighton Post just when I was mushing by with my dog sled. Gee, well, what did you do? Well, I stopped my sled, pulled out my six shoe, and went barging right on in. <laughs> I can tell you, Bobby, that robber liked to drop in his boots when he saw me standing there looking mean as a grizzly. Oh, gosh. Then what? what? Well, what you expect? He dropped his gun, put up his hands, and gave up right then and there. <laughs> Even a mountie couldn't have done that good. No, sir. Mother Weber at the trading post in Dundee told me once about a mountie named Sergeant Preston and his dog, King. I bet they would have caught that robber, too. Sergeant Preston of the Mounties, eh? <laughs> Funny thing, but I was just going to tell you about the time I helped him track down a couple of crooks. Oh, do you know Sergeant Preston and King? King? Oh, his dog. The one Mother Weber told me about. Oh, you meant Preston's dog, King. Well, why didn't you say so? Sure, sure, Bobby. Preston and King are good friends of mine. God, well, why didn't you tell me that before, Grandpa? Why... Just never comes to my mind, I reckon. Mother Weber said King won't mind anyone but Sergeant Preston. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, now, just between you and me, Bobby, I happen to be the only other person that King will mind. Why, many is the time when Sergeant Preston and me and King was tracking down some tough crooks. The sergeant would say to me, he'd say, Ben, he'd say, even King respects the way you can quit drawing a crook. And the way you... Hey, that dog sled and two men up ahead is coming from the side, like they was fixing to cut us off. Oh, look, Grandpa, both those men have things over their faces so only their eyes show. Uh, jump, Judy. Maybe they're fixing to hold us up and me with all my gold in the sled. Hold on there, we want to talk to you. Hold there, hold. Now, now look at here, mister, it's mighty cold and... Shut up. You heard what he told you? That gun... Quiet. We've been watching you. We know you do pretty well at that claim of yours. And we figure you might be bringing in the take from your claim right now. Oh, no. No, I... Take I, I, him I, away, Grandpa. 
If they knew you used to help Sergeant Preston, I could... <laughs> you hear that, Duke? The old goatee told the kid he used to help Sergeant Preston. <laughs> Must have swept out his cabin with those stubby whiskers of his. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look at him shake, will you? I'm, I'm just cool, that's all. Are you going to cough up the gold you got? Or do we have to no, wait, take it? Wait, wait, now. It's under the covers of the bed. I'll get it. It isn't much, but it's all I have. It's in this bag. Give me that. Uh, not so bad, Red. If my grandpa gets mad, you'll both be sorry, I bet. Won't say, Grandpa. Yeah, quiet, Bobby, quiet. Well, Goatbeard, are you going to get mad at us? Or do you want us to... No, no, no. I... I'm not mad at anybody right now. You see... Ah, come on, Duke, before the old codger ship us right out of his pocket. Yeah, let's go. Hey! 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 Yeah, there they go with three months of my taking the claim. Dog, Oh, don't let him get away, Grandpa. Use your gun. Huh? Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. Now I am getting mad. I'll... Uh, what's the use? My hands is cool. But, gee, Grandpa, that's all you told me about how you... Well, never mind, Bobby. Never mind all that now. We gotta go on to Dundee. Mush, you on the kill. Mush! It was early the following night when Sergeant Preston and King arrived in the little settlement of Dundee and entered the trading post. One King. Come on, fellow. Oh, so is the Sergeant Quest. Hello, Hans. <laughs> How are things going? Oh, fine, fine, Sergeant. And there is King, too, yeah. Say hello to Mr. Weber, King. <laughs> ah, so. <laughs> King always knows what you say, huh? He understands pretty well. <laughs> uh, you come, I suppose, to see your good friend, old Ben Taylor, hmm? Ben Taylor? <laughs> oh, I'm making a joke with you, Sergeant. I know you don't know him. He's an old prospector who lives alone with his grandson, Bobby. Mm. Poor little Bobby. He don't feel so good about his grandpa right now. Oh, mother. But yesterday, old Ben was coming to Dundee with the boy from their cabin two miles west of here. Uh, a couple of men held him up and took Ben's little bag of gold. I see. It's too bad it snowed during the night. King and I might have been able to track them. Oh, Ben feels worse about the boy. You mean they harmed the boy? Oh, no, no, no. No, nothing like that. It's Ben himself who did the damage. You know, he's always telling the boy stories about himself, making them up, you know. I see. Go on. Well, yesterday we find out that he even told Papi that he was a friend of yours and King, and that he helped you track down crooks. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> but, uh, about the boy, Hans. Oh, well, he was here with old Ben, and he heard everyone laughing on his grandfather. And Bobby <laughs> lost faith in his grandfather, is that it? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Bobby told us what Ben had said. And then everyone laughed and said that Ben didn't know you at all. <laughs> oh, the poor little fella. He went away with tears in his eyes. He thought his grandpa was a hero, you see. Well, of course, it's wrong for old Ben to tell things that aren't true, but it's worse to have that little boy lose faith in one he loves. And perhaps Bobby will feel differently, and the folks around here won't laugh at old Ben much longer. Right. Hey. You don't mean you do know old Ben, such. You'll find out what I mean, Hans, in due time. Come on, King. We have something to do. Later that night, as the wind moaned about their little cabin, old Ben and his grandson Bobby sat near the warmth-giving pot-bellied stove in silence. Several times Ben glanced at the boy, but Bobby stared at the floor. Then old Ben cleared his throat loudly and spoke. <coughs> Say, uh, Bobby... Did I ever tell you about the time... Grandpa. I... Yeah? You gonna say something, son? Grandpa, why did you tell me... Well, that... That you knew that Mounty, Sergeant Preston and his dog King. Why did you, Grandpa? Well, now, son, you mustn't go feeling bad because of what happened at the trading post yesterday. Just because them folks say I... But they said you... You lied to me. They laughed at you and... And said you aren't brave at all. Golly, Grandpa, all this... Somebody stopping outside. Now I wonder who could be stopping here tonight. Good evening, Ben. Howdy, mister. <laughs> Jump in, Judy. That big husky. Don't let him in. Don't eat. worry. King wouldn't hurt an old friend, would you, fellow? <laughs> King, did you say? 
Oh, then you must be... Who is it, Grandpa? Bobby, tell your grandfather he shouldn't keep his old friends King and Sergeant Preston out here in the cold. Sergeant Preston and King? Oh, golly, Grandpa, you do know them. Uh, uh-huh. Leastwise, that's what he says. Come in, come in. Thanks, Ben. Go on in, King. <laughs> oh, gosh. Please, Grandpa, tell King to do something. You said you were the only one besides Sergeant Preston could get King to do something. No, 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 Bobby. No, you Go ahead, to... Ben. Uh, tell King to lie down. Uh, yeah, well, if you say so. Uh, lie down, King. <laughs> he did it. He did it. Oh, Grandpa didn't fool me after all, like they said. Uh, look, look, Bobby. <laughs> I've got a thought as to why Sergeant Preston come here. So you might You just... uh, never were good at guessing, Ben. I suppose I'll have to tell you. Tell me? What you going to tell me? Well, I came here to get your help, Ben. Oh, golly. My help? Doing what, Sergeant? Catching those crooks who stole your gold. I'll need your help oh, to get them. Jumping, Judy. If only I'd kept my big mouth shut, all this wouldn't have happened. Now you come... But I'm me. not joking, Ben. Not at all. Not, not joking? No. Oh, that's worse. You know, Bobby, he always acts like that, sort of making believe he might be afraid. <laughs> making believe, he says. Oh, he does it to fool crooks, I bet. Uh, they get fooled into thinking it's a real thing, I reckon. Like yesterday. I uh, heard about that, Ben. Of course you couldn't have any gunplay with Bobby there. Uh, say, say, now that's right. You know, if Bobby hadn't been along, I'd... Leave have... that for another time, Ben, eh? Huh? Oh, yeah. So far, you haven't said you'd help me catch those cooks. What about it? Oh, gosh, Sergeant Preston, you know he will. Won't you, Grandpa? <laughs> Stephen King is looking at you, aren't you, King? King's asking you to help, too, Ben. Uh, well, now, it's this way. You Fine, see? I knew you would. Yeah, now, I... uh, put on your parka and we'll step outside while oh. I tell you our plans. By this time tomorrow night, I feel sure we'll catch the cooks who stole your gold. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, tell me, what was breakfast like at your home this morning? Was your family a breakfast-happy family? Did you enjoy tasty, heaping bowlfuls of Quaker puffed wheat or rice? Say, if you didn't, do you know what? I'd say you were missing out, that's what. That's because Quaker puffed wheat and rice are the famous ready-to-serve cereals shot from guns. Yes, huge guns are loaded with only the premium wheat or rice grains. Then these choice kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. These king-size greens are magnified, glorified, crispified. And most important, Quaker puff wheat and rice are good for you. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So take a tip. Don't miss out. Check right now. See if you have a supply for this coming weekend of wheat and rice Shot from guns. If not, ask for both delicious kinds. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. After Sergeant Preston had taken old Ben outside and discussed his plan for capturing the crooks who had held up Ben and Bobby... The Mountie and King returned to the settlement where they put up at the small hotel. The following afternoon, toward sundown, old Ben arrived with Bobby at Weber's trading post. Leaving Bobby with Mrs. Weber, the old man went to the cafe where most of the townsmen gathered. Well, if it isn't old Ben himself, tracking down them crooks, Ben? (laughs) Well, now, maybe I have, and uh, then again... Maybe you haven't. Oh. <laughs> Hans Weber at the trading post told me that old friend of yours, Sergeant Preston, went through here yesterday, Ben. Maybe you should have been on hand to greet him and that famous dog of his. <laughs> well, I reckon Preston and King would understand if I didn't get in to greet him. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Ben, you still aren't sticking to that story about being good friends of theirs, are you? <laughs> Yeah, Ben, give it to us straight. Come on, admit you're telling a tall one, Ben. Don't reckon I got to admit anything to any of you that I don't want. Tell us straight from the shoulder, Ben. 
How come you let them crooks get away with all the gold you had without lifting a finger to stop them? Well, now, who said it was all the gold I had, anyhow? Matter of fact, maybe those crooks was the ones who really got fooled. Never can tell. What do you mean by that? Yeah, what do you mean? Wasn't it all you had, Ben? I reckon if I was to tell you, and them crooks ever was to find out that I had the biggest part of my gold hid back in a certain place inside my cabin... Both you and them would be surprised. Uh, yeah. Well, looks like they were outsmarted after all. If you have the biggest part hit at the cabin. I'm not saying it's really true, mind you. <laughs> when you tell us something and say it isn't really true, that's when we know it must be true. How about it, boys? Yeah. <laughs> what did you do, leave little Bobby out there alone to watch over that gold for you? No, no, Bobby's over at the Weber. He's going to stay there tonight on a visit. Don't need anyone to watch at the cabin. I've got a certain place there to hide things. A place no one could find without me being there to tell him. Yeah, you were staying uh, over for the night, too, Ben? No, I don't reckon so. I've got some things to do early in the morning out at McLean. Fact is, I'm starting back to my cabin right now. Just dropped in to get warmed up a bit before starting. <laughs> Be seeing you all again soon. Go on. So long, Ben. Right. Bring in all the crooks you catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A short time after Ben left the cafe, a rough-looking man who had been sitting alone at one of the tables got up and nonchalantly made his way toward the door without attracting the attention of the other men. Once outside, he hurriedly walked to the edge of the settlement until he reached a small cabin. He stopped for a moment, looking back to make sure no one had noticed his haste. Then he opened the door of the cabin and entered. Hi, Duke. I thought you were going to stay while at the cafe. I changed my mind, Duke. You see, while I was in there, I heard something interesting. If you mean about Sergeant Preston of the Monty's and that big dog of his coming to town, I already know it. But he hasn't got anything on us. I know that. I'm not talking about that Monty. It was something else I heard. Well, what was it? That old geezer we took the gold from a couple of days ago came into the cafe. He was giving us the laugh by saying he's got most of his gold hid out what? there in his cabin. <laughs> well, well, you don't say... That is interesting. Where is old Goat Whisker? Still at the cafe? Yeah, he's going on home. Left a short time ago. Yeah, that kid being out there with him complicates things. I sort of hate to have to but do But the kid it. isn't there tonight, Duke. He's with the Webbers at the trading post for a couple of days. Might be a cinch for us to get that gold. Yeah, except for one thing. What's that? Don't forget that Monty and his dog. Even if we did away with the old man, they'd be on our trail in a day or two. I thought of that. But it started to snow hard outside. I bet he'd cover any tracks we'd make. We could go out there without the dogs and sled, get that gold, finish off the old man, and come back here to hold up without anyone being the wiser. Yeah. Yeah, we could at that. There's no time like the present to get moving. Come on, let's go. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and the great dog King, waiting outside in the shadows, had observed old Ben leave the cafe. Still keeping in the shadows, the Mountie and his dog followed to the edge of the settlement, where Ben turned off on a trail that led to his cabin. Though a swirling snow had begun to fall, Sergeant Preston and King waited patiently. Finally, two men whose faces and figures were indistinguishable because of the bulky parkas they were wearing, trudged along the main street, and then turned off on the trail taken by old Ben. King, standing beside his master, immediately sensed that the two men going past a short distance away meant danger. The massive dog had felt Sergeant Preston's fingers tense slightly as they rested on his back. They momentarily expected to hear an order to attack, but none came. Yet King's hair bristled, and instinctively a low growl started deep in his throat. Quiet, King. Easy, fellow. I couldn't be going far without dog sleds, King. Those are the men we want to follow. Come on, boy. <laughs> Meantime, Duke and Red, unaware that Sergeant Preston and King had seen them, trudged along slowly in the snow. The wind blew the falling snow in their faces and made it difficult to follow the trail. Finally, they approached a remote cabin and noted the glow of light shining through its window that told them old Ben had reached home. There's his cabin, Red. Yeah. Now you wait here. I'll go look in the window and make sure he's alone. Be right back. Cool. Hurry up, Red. I'm getting cold. He's long. 
sitting there smoking a pipe by the stove. Good. Come on. Maybe he won't open up. If they don't, we'll go around to the window and drip. Who's there? We are. Get out of the way. Oh, see, now, you're kind of rough for callers, aren't you? Shut up. Close the door, dude. So to beat the band, isn't it? How come you're traveling without a dog team tonight? Never mind the chatter. We came here for a purpose. You did? Well, what do you know? Guess you don't know who we are, good face. Uh, no, don't reckon I do, mister. Kind of place in voices of yours, but for the life of me, I can't tell just where I heard him before. Now, let's see. Was we it didn't over... come here to play guessing games. Don't blame me a bit. If there's one thing that gets me out of sorts, it's playing games. I recollect once when I was... Let say, shooter, says you'll shut up and listen. <clears throat> I never talk back to a gun, mister. I'm listening. You got gold hid in this cabin. Where is it? Now, however did you find that out, I wonder? If you didn't shoot off your mouth so much, we wouldn't have found it out. Where is it? Ah, let me see. Just where is that hiding place? <laughs> you know, the older I get, the more forgetful I become. It's a funny thing, isn't it? Ah, uh, plug the old coat, and then we'll search the cabin. Now, 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 don't be so hasty. Yeah, I reckon I'm beginning to remember where that hiding place is at last. Well, speak up, then. Hey, a funny thing. The old man don't seem to be nervous like he was the other day when we held him up on the trail. What? So that's where we met before. You know, now that I've come to think... Show us that hiding place around... Yeah, sure, sure. It's... It's under the floorboards over there in that corner. My rheumatism is acting up tonight, so... If you want to see for yourself... Let's take a look, dude. All right. Boards here, Rip. Kind of hard to get up, though. Yeah, Bobby usually has to help me lift him. Yeah, sort of takes two. Sit down there and don't move, or I'll let you have it. Sit down. Uh, sure. Sure, mister. <laughs> He's shaking now, all right. I'll help you, Duke. He's nothing to worry about. As Red walked over to help Duke and stooped down to loosen the floorboards, Ben slyly took a gun from inside his coat. At first, his hand shook violently. Then, remembering Sergeant Preston and King, he controlled himself. And grasping the gun in both hands, stood up and aimed it at Red and Duke. Now! Now I got both of you covered! What the... So you better drop that gun! Look, Red! I ain't gonna shoot if you don't drop that gun, mister! Hey, old you better take a look at the window behind me, mister, and think again. I reckon you'll see a Mountie standing there, aiming at you right through the window. You see, this was all planned to get you to come here. It's a trick, Red! Ah! That's right, and it worked, too. Yeah? Well, if part of your plan was to have a Monty standing outside that window with a pointed gun, it didn't work. There's nobody outside that window. Ah, but nobody outside. But there must be. He said he'd be sure to cut. Oh! As old Ben realized that Sergeant Preston wasn't at the window as he'd planned to be, he stared in dismay at the crooks before him, and the gun wobbled in his shaking hands. Meantime, King would run ahead of Sergeant Preston as they neared the cabin, sniffed the tracks of the men they were trailing. Coming to the place where they had stopped, his curiosity caused him to follow the single tracks made by Red when he had gone to look in the window. The light from the window and muffled voices attracted King, and reaching his front paws up to the low windowsill, the intelligent dog looked inside. King's sharp ears caught the ominous tones of Red's voice. They saw him reach out his gun toward old Ben. The great dog instinctively knew the gun would spurt out death-dealing bullets any minute, and he went into action. Moving back a short distance, he raced forward and sprang. <laughs> King lunged straight for Red, grabbing him by the gun arm and knocking the gun from his hand. Help, help, get him off! Do something, Duke! I'll get him down! No, I won't let you! Let go of my arm, you old fool! Duke, do something! Get that dog off! This will settle you, old man! Oh! I'll shoot that dog right now. Oh, my arm. Oh, my arm. That dog. He nearly killed me. He'll live, I think. Watch him, King. Ben. Ben, are you all right? Oh, I, I'm a goner. They got me. Hey, Sergeant Preston, you got here. Yes, Ben, but almost too late. King ran on ahead, and I came as quickly as I could. King saved my life. Come right through the window like a thunderbolt. Huh? Oh, I guess I took a tumble. I saw through the window how you kept one of them from shooting King. It was a brave thing, Ben. You might have been shot. Shot, Sergeant? 
Do I recollect the time Promise when I... one thing, will you, Ben? No more tall stories. Right, King? <laughs> now we'll take your sled, Ben, and get these two crooks into Dundee. Go get it ready, please. All right, Sergeant. Come on, you two. Let's go. The following afternoon, a group of men stood around the big glowing stove in the trading post. I tell you, gentlemen, every word is true. Sergeant Preston himself told me the story. Well, maybe so, Hans, but it's hard to believe that old Ben... Oh, is... here they come now, and also King and Little Bob. Hello, Hans. Hello. Quite a uh, gathering you have here today. Ah, uh, that is so, Sergeant. They have come to find out if it is true what you told me about old Ben. I don't believe in lying, ah, Hans. there. You see, just like I said. And my grandpa is a friend of Sergeant Preston's and King's. So there. He certainly is, Bobby. He stood up to those crooks last night and saved King's life. I asked for Ben's help in catching those crooks, and he didn't fail me. Well, I'll be doggone. I guess we got to apologize to you, Ben. You're all right, eh, man? Yes, sir. Well, tell us, Ben. Weren't you scared any? <laughs> well, no, I got to admit I was a mite scared for a bit. But we set out to get the crooks that robbed me. By gum, we did it, too. Found my bag of gold on one of them. Graf is about the bravest man I ever heard tell of. Catching those crooks wasn't anything of some of the things he's done. Isn't that right, Grandpa? <clears throat> well, now, come to think of it, I do recollect once over in cell. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like King's trying to tell me something. Could be, Ben. Maybe he remembers a certain promise. Huh? Oh, yep, <laughs> smartest dog I ever knew of. Well, what were you going to tell about when you were in cell? Oh, Selkirk? forget it, Bobby. Any stories I have a mind to tell, I'll let King tell him for me after this. That's the wisest decision you ever made, Ben. But at least you can tell how you helped King and me close the case. Hey, eh, King? In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of next Monday's program. Discover why Quaker puffed wheat and rice win the praise of so many Hollywood movie stars. Try wheat or rice shot from guns yourself at breakfast tomorrow, sure. These giant, tender, king-size grains are premium grains. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the big Quaker red and blue package to get the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen next Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Potluck Killers. We have a mighty exciting show for you next Monday. It begins when King saves a girl from drowning, but that's just the beginning. Before we leave that girl, I'm captured by six murderers. And if it hadn't been for King, well, it's a critical moment when they decide to add me to their list of victims. Don't miss this exciting story next Monday. Till then, this is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.